What's going on guys? Cody here coming back at you with a video that all of you have been asking me about trying to deep dive on the type of live scope we have. So if you want to see how to set up live scope, the two systems that we run and catching some slabs on the live scope, y'all stick around. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is this right here. So this is the transducer mount. If you look down there at the bottom, we on my dad's boat use the LVS 34 transducer. Again, this is his setup on his boat. Y'all stick around because I got a little surprise here in the middle of this video. But anyway, so this mount is made by Sea Light, S-E-E-L-I-T-E. -E -E. We're not sponsored by them. This is just what he uses. We don't make a commission on it. I will put a link in the description box of this mount. So this mount, it allows, so it has this slip uh, joint right here. So this joint has a collar, you set the depth. So you loosen this collar, you can move that up and down and it sets the depth of the pole. The good thing about that collar is you can take the pole and you can move it left and right. As you've seen in many of our videos when we're uh, scouting for fish or sniping slabs or looking for new brush piles, you'll see us moving it left and right, up and down, or not up and down, but left and right a lot. That is how it's done. So the sea light mounts to your deck right here with three bolts. Um, installation tip for y'all, if you're gonna put it on your boat that comes with washers that you put on the backside, crank that sucker down. If you have foam in your boat, like most bass boats do, tighten it down until those washers crush that foam and really sink down this mount because if not it will get really loose some features of this pole are it's all user friendly it stows very easy you can open that take the take the uh, rod mount out you can use the transducer in forward or perspective mode it's in forward mode right now um, there's uh, the set screw on the back here you can set this screw right here so this screw is used to stop the motion from forward and back. And then this screw right here is used to lock the, the left and right mo uh, uh, motion of it. So the tighter you make it, the stiffer it becomes to use. But again, Sea Light version 2.0, I believe, transducer mount LVS 34. Now for the screen, for the screen what we use is a Garmin 126 SV. You've seen it in a thousand videos. Now, what 126 stands for, it's the 12 inch version. Uh, I have a 10 inch, he has a 126 SV. Um, so it is it uses live scope, of course, and it has traditional sonar, 2D, all that stuff. And it's mounted on this pole made by Stowaway. Again, not sponsored, but I'll put a link in it, link to it in the description box. It's made by Stowaway and underneath it, we have the 10 inch Solix. And so that what we do with the Solix, been around the channel long enough, the Solix is for our Navionics maps or our Lake Master maps, depending on what you use. It shows us the topography of the lake. The head unit, the head unit for the live scope is the 126 SV, and obviously we use it solely for um, live scope. That's it. Uh, we keep them stored. I like personally. We've you've seen. We've used these. My, this has been a setup on this boat for gosh four or five years now. Um, it's a fantastic setup. The only thing I'll say is with the stowaway mount, it works best if you fold it down uh, when you're going across the lake. So if you look, they do stow, you just pull that lever and it comes down. It's got three different positions. Uh, so you pick which position you want it in when we're using it. We go to that position. When we're driving across the lake, we come all the way down to the bottom. You spin this screen around like this, pick this up, and then uh, it stores all the way down like that. Sorry, everything's really loose right now because I'm making this video for y'all. So the same with the live scope pole. So how we tighten the live scope pole, I'm sorry, store the live scope poles is you, you don't have to put away the transducer or anything. All you have to do is stow the arm. So you just loosen this back nut right here and it has this um, gimbal arm. So you're just gonna rotate it up and you can lay it on your deck and then tighten it back down and you can shoot across the lake like this. This is what I would call 50% stored. So this isn't completely stored away. Now, when you're done fishing for the day, same thing, but you're gonna loosen this arm right here and they do have replacement parts. I don't know if you can see, but this is a 3D printed part. So one thing we do like about this arm is you can tell this is 3D printed. The arm sticks about two and a half feet into the water. Uh, and so what'll happen is if it catches on a tree or something, the pole doesn't bend. This, this knuckle right here breaks, which I think, we both think is a pro and not a con because you don't have to replace the whole unit. You can just get this replacement end piece right here. So anyway, if you wanna completely store it, you just take it, you're gonna loosen this nut, pull the, the arm out, lay this on the deck like this. We bungee it down so it's all nice and secured. And then you're just gonna loosen the arm, spin this around. Oh my gosh, I get this hit screen so tight. Spin this around, bring it in like that. 
and then you can tighten this back screw right there. So that's how that is stored. Now, power, I'm gonna take you out of the back. How it's ran is we use a 32 amp hour amped outdoors battery. Let's take it to the back of the boat and I'll show y'all how that's set up. Through Movie Magic, we're at the back of the boat. So how this is a uh, Nitro 20, 22, Nitro 19, Z19. Yeah, that's what it is. So the battery compartment is in the back of the boat. I have my flashlight here so I can show y'all. So this is the battery compartment, but the battery for the live scope is right here. So this is a 32 amp hour lithium battery. Now I can't say enough good things about that battery. Sorry, it's really tight back here. I can't say enough good things about that battery. I had problems with mine at one point and without any questions asked, they helped us fix it. The customer service was bar none, top of the line. They got it fixed in like two days for me. But that battery right there will run both the 34 and the 32 LS, uh, LVS 32 and 34 with whatever head unit for comfortably, and I am comfortable saying this, for about two and a half days straight. There has not been a time yet where we have lost power due to the battery losing power in between charges, if that makes sense. So one charge will last you for a long time we fish usually all day long no issues at all no power loss no needing to jump off the battery no needing to bring a backup battery none of that stuff it just comes with the territory of using a lithium battery they are fantastic again not sponsored but man if i had to pick a battery i would pick the 32 amp hour amped outdoor battery again it's just a fantastic setup that's the nitro setup we'll call it the lvs 34 is my dad's boat the one that you see on a lot of our videos so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a jump over to my boat i don't know what happened i got some throat thing sorry anyway so when we go over to my boat my my setup is very similar to uh my dad's setup so the difference is i use a gps map 1022 so that's this unit this is the unit so with the gps map you can use active captain which is the app to where you can record the screen so anyway i have the, the uh gps map 1022 it's on a uh, beat down outdoors uh, pole. I'll put a link to that in the description box to tell you which one it is. Um, I, unlike my dad, I run the LVS 32 transducer. So that's this transduce, transducer here. But the biggest difference is how they're made. So I made my own transducer pole and all that. So it's super simple construction, um, really easy to use. What it is, it's a ram mount. So. It's a, I think it's a six or eight inch ram mount, which is this piece right here, um, mounted to the gunnel of my boat. And then the back plate, the ram mount plate is mounted to the back of this PVC pipe. And so all this is, and I'll deploy it here to show y'all, it's really easy, super easy um, to deploy. So all this is, is it's, uh, what is this? This outside pipe is, don't let me lie to you, hold on. Don't let me lie to you, inch and a quarter. So this outside pipe here, this one right here is inch and a quarter PVC. And on the inside of it, I believe is one inch. I'm like 99% sure that on the inside here is one inch PVC. Um, and so what that does is it creates this um, through way basically to where I can still pivot the transducer and y'all can see down there. I'm still able to trans pivot the transducer. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this. And then I put a 45 degree elbow with another piece of PVC up to the handle. And if you wanna stand up on the deck here, uh, you can see she can hold it, move it around. So see when you're standing on there fishing on the deck, thank you for your beautiful uh, van of whiteness here. <laughs> but when you're standing on the deck, you can, uh, you can use it very easily. You'll also notice I put panhead screws right here and that's just to keep it from sliding down. I didn't want the pipe sitting on the, uh, on the on the collar here i wanted the weight of the pole to be supported on these screws here and then these screws are just to keep it so i didn't have to use glue i didn't want to use a bunch of glue on there and make it look all rough and rudimentary and then it comes down here it mounts just like every other transducer um again this is the 32 i'm actually going to upgrade to the 34 very very soon uh, we use both and both are very good. I just like that you get a little bit more clarity with the 34. It, it's a little bit more of a detailed picture and you can really dial that 34 in. So I'm gonna switch to that. I'm gonna run the exact same um, pole and all that though. And so this one is called the Flex that the transducers are, that the screens are on. This is called the Flex and it's made by Beatdown Outdoor. It's a good little, nice little unit here. Um, you can adjust it up and down. So all you gotta do is loosen these knobs and then it goes up uh pretty high uh, i think 36 inches and then down and then and then when you store it you uh all you gotta do is loosen this handle here and then you can store your unit uh, face down like that and that's how i drive around with it that way it's down it's protected it's out of the way uh, and then the the 
transducer here, you can pick it up and it just lays on the deck like this. Super, super easy to, to get deployed and restowed. Um, very, very, very versatile. Very nice. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy it anyway. And then my battery, I use the same battery as my dad's boat, Raj and Reel's boat, what we were just on. The difference is I keep mine up front. So these are my trolling motor batteries. They run the trolling motor, obviously. And then I keep my battery here in the front and I have it hardwired in. So this goes back to an onboard charger that I have at the back of the boat. And again, I'm using the Amped Outdoors 32 amp hour lithium battery. Guys, I love that battery a ton. Uh, we use our boats for five to eight hours at a time and power is no problem at all. One of the things I like, if you got a 50 amp hour one, you probably go for like a week or two, honestly, not two, but like a week. But that's my setup. And then I have my black box mounted um, right in there right under so it's the battery let me show you here so it's the battery the black box the transducer and then the the, the head units now i will tell you when you if you want to set yours up like mine you do have to do some hole drilling so you're going to have to drill some holes and you can see these are rusted make sure you get stainless hardware because if you're not using stainless hardware well guys it's going to rust especially with as much versatility as the center console has you're going to be on salt water you're going to be on fresh water it's just it is what it is so make sure you're using salt um not salt i'm sorry make sure you're using stainless hardware to protect your boat but yeah guys that's that's our setups that's how i have mine set up that's how he has his setup uh both very good the biggest differences is like i said on mine the gps map all the gps map models have active captains so we can record the screen um i'm just learning how to do that so make sure you smash the subscribe button because we're going to have a lot more videos with uh live scope on the screen action instead of me holding the camera there it's the benefit of that and now i have my boat back so that's a huge plus as well but uh guys let's head to the lake let's put them both to work um and let's just show you what it looks like to use live scope and let's go catch a couple slabs there's a big one right there though at 10 feet got him <laughs> got yeah him. that's got what him. you're after <laughs> oh Look bigger on screen, but definitely happy to have you on board, sir. Bada bing, bada boom. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, ride the rail, grab one. <laughs> there you oh. go. Oh, it's all right. I'm going to back you up. I'm going to back you up here. Come across the pile right now. Got him. Got him. Super light bite, though. Daggum tank, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, look at that. Hi, sir. A little, little, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. There we go. Look at that joker. That's a nice one there. That's a beautiful fish. Woo! Some of that sunlight on it, boy. All right. Put it back. 